Ooh, that feels good to do. I haven't done that in like over a year. Holy crap. How's it going everybody? My name's David, AKA Ghost of Mozart. And whether you're last minute holiday shopping or you're watching this at a different time of year, I don't know. This is the perfect gift guide for that Smash Bros player in your life, or even just a Nintendo fan. I split this list up into three different categories today. So no matter what the skill level is, beginner, intermediate, or expert, I have a gift recommendation for you. Now I'm gonna say this right now, no matter what a person's skill level is, they are going to appreciate a new or an additional controller. So I have different controller recommendations in each category. Other than that though, each category is gonna have their own unique gifts. After all, not all controllers are the same. You wouldn't wanna spend $250 on your little cousin just that thing is seriously $250. Oh my goodness it is. I wouldn't call myself an expert, but if anybody wants to get me this, anyway, we'll cover that later. You wouldn't want to spend $250 on an advanced controller for your little cousin that has Cheeto dust all over their fingers and wanted the imposter from Among Us added to the game and only plays when their friends come over, would you? But maybe you would for somebody else in your life. So that's why I have a different type of controller in every single category. But no matter who you are, promise me you will never buy this controller. It's from Power A, it's the worst thing ever. I'll cover it later. But without further ado, let's get into it. Yeah. All right, so the beginner, the casual, whatever you want to call it, it's exactly what it sounds like. They're not super into the game. They probably only play when friends and family come over, but they'd still appreciate gifts for it, right? Now the first recommendation I have is actually the fighter passes. These literally add on to the game and expand it. And the casual people usually don't want to spend that additional money on it. You might be thinking everybody that has Smash already has these expansions. I don't think that's actually true. Plus this is the holiday season. So there's people getting a Nintendo Switch for the first time and getting Smash Bros for the first time. And they would appreciate that extra little expansion to add on to their game. Adds a bunch of Characters is really the main thing people want, but it also adds stages and music and stuff like that. Along that line, for the casual player, you can get them eShop gift cards. Honestly, in Smash Bros, you can buy like cosmetics for the Mii Fighters specifically for pretty cheap, but I still don't find myself spending money on that because I don't really need it. But if somebody got me a eShop gift card, even if it was like five bucks or whatever, I'd probably use it towards skins in Smash just because I've, I've never had a reason to buy them before. And if they're casual and they don't play Smash that much, they can use the eShop gift card towards other things on their Nintendo Switch. And lastly, for controller recommendations, I do recommend Joy-Cons because honestly, most casual players, they're playing this game when friends come over again, but they usually only have that one set of Joy-Cons that the Nintendo Switch came with. So buying them an additional pair helps to have at least four people play, even if it's on the half Joy-Con. Again, this is the casual level. They're not gonna care too much on how advanced it is. It's just nice to have extra controllers. Or you can also buy them a Pro Controller if they play by themselves, because the Pro Controller is good for multiple games on the Switch. And honestly, even professional players in Smash do use the Pro Controller. It just takes a little bit to get used to, I guess. I like the Pro Controller, I'm not gonna lie. What am I saying? Let's move on to the next section, the intermediate player. I should specify, I shouldn't use the word skill levels, I'm talking about like their level of interest in the game, the intermediate player, okay? This is the person that's willing to play Smash by themselves, they'll play online, they're not just playing when friends come over, they're, they're into Smash enough where you hear them talk about it. Now this gift could fit all three sections of this list, but I'm gonna suggest Amiibos for the intermediate level. Amiibos are a great way to also add on to Smash if you never have, and I don't know anybody that owns every single Amiibo, I'm sure somebody's out there, but even to this day, they are still releasing new Amiibos for Smash. So what this does is basically you scan it into the game, it adds a copy of that amiibo into the game and you can train it, it learns from your behavior and then it's kind of a challenge to try to beat it. That's really the, the fastest way I can explain it. Now as far as what amiibo to get them, I can't really tell you that. You gotta find out what characters they like, I guess. You could always be like, what character do you play? <laughs> What character do you play in that Smash Bros game again? I don't know. I don't know how you're gonna do it. Any amiibo you get, honestly, they'll probably like, they'll just like their main better. Just ask them who they play and don't be suspicious. Now my next recommendation for the intermediate level, they might already have this, but if they don't, it's an absolute must. It's gonna be an ethernet adapter. What this does is it plugs into the Nintendo Switch dock 
and then it allows you to plug an ethernet cable into this end and it allows for a much better internet connection for online play. Smash is notorious for having absolutely terrible online, but they use something called peer-to-peer -peer connection, which I won't explain, but basically as long as both people playing have a good connection, it's supposed to be a pretty enjoyable experience. So chances are whoever you're playing on the other end is doing whatever they can to improve their connection all the way. So you should also do the same for that person that you love. And these are seriously so cheap, they can be a stocking stuffer. And my controller recommendation for the intermediate level is going to be a GameCube controller. Now you can't really find the genuine ones like I have here anymore, because they're just kind of out of stock or whatever. But the Japan imports that are specifically made for Smash that are corded, these tend to be the most popular for intermediate level, like people that actually play Smash. So they're a little bit pricey, but they're definitely worth it. I would love one of these myself, and you're gonna wanna make sure to get them a GameCube uh, controller adapter as well. This is also great for PC if they have it apparently, uh, but you can use it for PC and the Nintendo Switch. All right, let's bring it home. Let's move on to the expert or advanced or whatever I called it. Called it, called it, called it, called it. The final section of the list, this is for those serious Smash players. Again, these aren't like professionals, but people that are really into the game. Now, my first recommendation for the expert level of this list is a Metify lesson. Wait, is it Metify? What this is, is it's your own private lesson with a professional Smash player. Now you don't do it in real life, you do it over like Discord online and stuff, but you actually get to play with a professional Smash player and they give you advice. The reason this is cool is not only because you're learning at a really high level and you're getting better, but most people that are really into Smash, they go to a person's Meetify list and they're usually a fan of that player. So not only are they learning a lot, and they're getting better at the game and it's like a actual lesson, but they're doing it from somebody that they are a huge fan of. I think this is a great idea and they are relatively cheap depending on the pro that you go for. But still, most pros I know of, even just one session is affordable. The next gift recommendation I have for this section is gonna be a capture card. This allows you to record your gameplay. Now, you can save your replays and get gameplay anyways without one of these, but this really allows you to literally just record the screen of the Nintendo Switch however much you want. It's really customizable. A lot of people are into streaming now, so this allows you to stream and show the game at the exact same time. So a lot of people can't afford one of these because they are kind of pricey, but people that are really into the game, I know pretty much everybody I talk to that's really into the game would love a capture card. So I think this is a great gift. Again, capture cards vary in price because they vary in quality. You can get away with a little cheaper if they're not super serious, they just want to get a couple clips or whatever, but I still would recommend the Elgato HD 60S at the time of recording. Now the controller recommendation I have for this section is going to be a Smashbox specific version to Smash Bros. These controllers are super cool. They've been in rise of popularity as of late. Uh, I think they became popular specifically because professional Smash players started having like, you know, mobility issues in their fingers and arthritis and stuff, especially ones that have been around for a while. Most pros do use GameCube controllers, so it's not a skill level thing. You don't have to be super good in order to use one. And most people find it kind of weird or awkward, so they stray away from it. But they are a super cool piece of technology. And if you can get good with one, you can get really good. And so if you have that Smash Bros fan in your life and you just have no idea what to get them, but there's someone really close to you and you have a big budget, this would be such a cool item to get just so they can try it out, honestly. And if they end up loving it, you're gonna be their favorite person that got them a gift that year, I guarantee it. So there you go, there's nine different gifts, three for each category, but before we go, I promised I would explain why I would not recommend this controller. This is an extremely popular controller in stores out there or even Amazon, because if you just Google GameCube controller, this is the one they try to sell you. It is compatible with the Switch, it is wireless, it is very similar to a GameCube controller, so on paper, it's great, but I am telling you, input delay and lag is a real thing on this. Button stiffness and buttons getting stuck, it is a real thing on this. I have videos from people in my own Discord that sent me a calibration test with a joystick. Snapback, if you don't even know what that means, just trust me, it's a big deal. It is an issue on this controller. Everything that you could think of being an issue on a wireless controller, it's this. I would much rather play on a pro controller, even though it's not similar to a GameCube, uh, than this piece of crap. Power A is one of the leading brands when it comes to game accessories, especially Nintendo Switch accessories. And uh, 
This thing has made me think I'm worse at the game. When I finally figured out that it was my controller causing the slightest little issues when I would try to recover to the stage and I'd SD and I couldn't figure out why. Anyway, do not get this controller for people. I understand if you did, if you were tricked by it, if you're deceived by it, it's marketed very well. It's terrible. And there you go. There's my Smash Brothers Christmas guide all wrapped up. I hope you guys found this helpful. And if you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. I really hope to be back making more consistent content now that I have a different job. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one and thank you for watching. This is one of the nicest Santa hats I've ever found. And it was only five bucks. So great deal, right? I thought, oh, this would be awesome for the video. Well, it's freaking hot as crap. So it's a little inconvenient to wear, but hey, it looks good.